Hey everyone, I'm Coach Shippies and I've been a professional top laner or head coach for the past 8 years. During this time I've reached Worlds and MSI multiple times. Now I'm a full time coach with a ton of passion towards helping players unlock their potential and climb to their dream rank. Welcome back everyone, today we're going to be covering exactly how to use Baron, and we'll be comparing the biggest differences between why the Asian teams are using it so much more effectively at Worlds than the Western teams. I have a few examples here from recent Worlds games, and we're going to be breaking down step by step exactly what these Western teams are doing wrong, and hopefully by the end of the video, you'll pick up a thing or two that you can apply in your games. Now before we compare how these teams are using Baron, it's important that I teach you the standard. And the standard way to use your Baron is to play two lanes. We're going to have one person mid and one person let's say top, and the other three will be forming a kill squad. They'll be taking over the topside jungle, getting vision, and protecting the two people that are pushing. And they can always rotate to a lane, help get the tower, but essentially they are just protecting that jungle, protecting the two people pushing, and eventually they're going to be able to break structures. And the reason you don't want to play three lanes is because it's impossible to take over two sides of the jungle, because you only have two people in the kill squad they can get easily brute forced by the enemy team and also you're spread too thin the person that's bot lane will be way too far apart from the person that's top so it's impossible to ever fully group up and even if you have tp the four seconds it takes to tp in that's fake news so you're not really going to be grouped and it's very easy to kill the person bot because they're not going to have any vision in the bot jungle because this team's going to be busy controlling topside now that's the standard way so let's compare it to how jdg uses their brand now the way JGG opted to use their Baron in this game is they want to have one person mid, one person top, and the other three controlling the jungle. However in this game ruler base laid, which could have been a mistake but he wanted his item so his team's playing around it and 369 noticing that, he knows they're not going to be setting up for Baron anytime soon because his AD carry is in base. So he actually fixes bot which is going to be the weak side and denies the enemy team the opportunity to use that. Because a good way to play against Baron when they're playing two lanes is of course push out the third one as much as you can, make someone base and answer you, and then you can base yourself and look to fight a 5v4. However, 369 notices ruler is going to be late, so he fixes bot wave and then groups with his team, removing that option from the enemy team. Now, they're controlling the enemy bot jungle as a three-man unit, like I said. However, it's important to note in this game, normally the three-man unit would, of course, have Vi involved. However, in this particular game, they have an Orianna playing the side with no flash. Because 369, he adapted to what was happening. He fixed the weak side of the map. And, of course, Orianna is now pushing top. When normally, 369 on Cassante would be the one pushing a side. Because he is the safest, basically, most unkillable champ on their team. However, a no-flash Orianna is not that safe. So Vi, knowing that, he is literally sitting in the lane protecting his Orianna from any harm. And if 369 is doing the same thing to his bot lane, he's making sure that the Lulu and Zeri, of course they're very hard to kill anyway, but he's just protecting them even more so, controlling the side of the jungle, getting pinks down, and Vi is keeping Orianna safe completely from what the enemy team can do. And here, they collapse the top to help them break down the tower, and they already pushed midwave earlier. However, mid lane is getting dropped now, but it's important to note that they're so far ahead at this point, they can just brute force this tower. But I thought it was really smart how they adapted to what was happening. Ruler base late, they didn't want to give the enemy team the opportunity to use bot wave, so they so 369 fixed that and then grouped. And you notice everyone was looking out for each other. 369 was looking out for his bot lane, uh, Oriana was being protected by Vi, and now they're just sieging down the space, where I feel like a lot of teams, especially Western teams, would have based after they break the top inhib or rotated mid but they are very aware of their limits with this with their team comp and with baron and they're just playing to siege it down because the enemy team comp is an all melee dive comp they don't really have any wave clear so jdg adapting to this and they're just full sieging and making them engage and another important thing to note is that when the enemy team is sieging your nexus towers sorry when you're sieging the nexus towers the enemy team has to engage on you you're going to end the game slowly with the baron ways you don't need to feel pressured to dive them on the nexus towers they are going to engage on you eventually and jdg knowing this they don't push too hard they're just slowly chipping away at the towers and waiting for the enemy team to engage to use their dive com and they counter it accordingly and as you see almost nobody died and they're able to end this game very cleanly with just one baron up next, I have another example from JDG, and this team is just so good at using their Baron, it blows me away. So I wanted to showcase a second game, where here you'll notice they all base at the same time. Of course, Renata stays on map, she doesn't need to base, she's full HP for mana, but the main point is, after you take Baron, if you need a base at some point, you got to recall as fast as possible. You can't waste time taking Grom, pushing a side wave. You want to be basing as soon as you can so that you can pressure as soon as you can. And of course in solo queue, this is going to be hard to do. Your jungler is probably going to go eat Grom for fun. But if you're playing Clash or Flex with the boys, or even if you're playing solo queue, you can ping your team to base with you. And it won't work every time, but it's the right thing to do. And that's what JDG does in this game. Where here, normally they would probably look to push mid wave. But because it's sole point, they look to clear it as soon as possible. And now they have a Vex side lane. Very vulnerable champ 
but she was here first, so they're playing accordingly. They are pr protecting her. Because she was there first, she was able to pressure faster, and now the rest of the team is making up for it by protecting her, and now Jarvan is the one going mid, which is important. They're not sending Callista mid. She is the most vulnerable out of the three potential options, which is Renekton, Jarvan, and Callista, of course. And Renekton could have gone here, but Jarvan's here first, right? So it's important to note the most important people for going to these solo lanes are going to be the champions that can survive, of course. But if you're there first and you're a good team, of course you can be pressuring as fast as possible. Where here, Kanavi does just that. Oh, he's the one catching mid, but he notices the enemy team on a ward and he's really just pushing the limits of Jarvan here. He's 1v2ing them. Something I'd, when I saw him EQ in here the first time, I didn't think it was possible, but man, this guy's just good. But the main point that he goes mid, of course, he punished their mispositioning. He's going mid for the wave. And while he's messing with these guys, 369 takes over his job and the enemy team commits. You see, they're just playing two lanes with the other three people protecting and they're not just playing that stock standard, just following the script every time. Jarvan notices a mistake, he punishes, and they are just pressuring as much as they can with the single Baron. We're here, of course, taking the inhib, everyone is looking out for each other. There's not been a single time during their Baron sequence where they could be engaged on by the enemy team because everyone has each other's backs and they're just slowly chipping down at these towers. They're not over committing because they know eventually the enemy team is going to have to engage on them. We're here, I'll speed it up a bit, but... Most teams in this position, in my opinion, Western teams, would recall here or go top. They would try to clear the top in Hib. They would just stall this game out for no reason. But JDG knows they, of course, can brute force it. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe a Western team would look to end here. But this is just something I see JDG do very consistently every single game that they take Baron at Worlds so far, where not a lot of teams are able to do this. Not a lot of teams can close the game out with one Baron, but JDG knows exactly how. They can get into this position with no one on their team being vulnerable for a moment. And now when they're here, they are not over committing for the dive. They're chipping down this tower, and of course, when they see the time is right to farm kills, they go for it. But the main point is there was never a situation during their Baron setup where they were vulnerable to being caught out and throwing the game. And that's just because they're not just playing the standard Baron macro, they know exactly how to push it one step further to the point where they're pressuring as much as possible without giving any opportunities. Now, if you were to compare the way JGG uses their Baron to the way these Western teams do, it's going to look night and day different. Where in this example, Mad Lions rush down the Baron at 20 minutes. However, by doing so, they lose a couple members. They trade kills. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing this if you're even or ahead trading Baron for kills, as it's going to be very hard to play out that situation. But in this game, they were down 3k gold, so I don't mind it. However, that does mean they are down in tempo. Now, being down in tempo in this context means the blue team is going to be up to pressure before them. They're going to be out onto the map first as five, and they're going to be able to push out waves that they have to answer and take over a side of the jungle where they have to retake one bush at a time. And the way to play against that is to push out the waves, make someone answer it. When they show on the waves, you can look to take over your side of the jungle one bush at a time. And Mad Lions is doing that. As you can see, Jarvan's flagging one bush. He's even leashing the red, keeping his AD carry alive. They're feeling very pressured from being down in tempo, and they wait until the rest of their team is alive coming onto the map. Now, a big mistake they make, in my opinion, is they deploy straight 5 mid. Where, like we talked about before, unless you have a clear plan in mind like JDG, you want to be playing two lanes originally. Now, tell me your notice with JDG, is they eventually did play one lane and brute force it, but they always took over a side of the jungle first. Where if you're just playing one lane, it's very hard to do so, because you're only making one person show on the wave. Where here, they should be retaking their jungle one bush at a time. They should be pushing out bot and mid together with a kill squad protecting the mid and bot. And eventually, when people are showing on waves even deeper into their base, then they can look to take over the enemy side of the jungle. However, in this case, they just group force five mid and Silas TPs in and they take a pure 5v5 team fight. Where it can go either way, but in this example, it was actually Mad Lions favored, but they do end up trading kills. Where when you have Baron, trading kills is not the best. Because if you're pushing into the enemy side of the map, then they're going to spawn before you, right? Even if they spawn at the same time as you, even if you have the same death timer, they're going to be there before you. They're closer to that side of the map, so it's, they're going to be able to back up their boys a lot sooner than your teammates are. We're here, they trade kills, of course, and they're still trying to break this tower, where it's just not enough. They're just trying to break one single tower, where they're not trying to take over any sides of the jungle. They're not looking to control the map, and here, that actually looks like a good opportunity, in my opinion, so I'm glad they took it. But they're just playing too deep for kills. They're just over-diving, they're just trying to get kills. They just have the kill mindset. They don't really have the territory and structure mindset. They just want to be brute-forcing and trying to get kills, trying to end the game just ARAM style, but I just don't agree with it. I really value taking over a side of the jungle, which you see JDG do, does. And even if you don't want to play two lanes the whole time, you really need to have that side of the jungle to fall back into. 
we're here now that they've had their baron they've essentially only gotten a single mid tower with their baron where if you saw the two jdg games for two barons they got two nexuses which of course is a lot better and to be fair they were more ahead than their opponents but they're also versus better opponents right and i rec i guarantee if jdg was on the red team even if they're down 3k gold they probably i'm not going to say they're going to end but they probably would have got a lot more than a single mid tower and that's just based purely on their knowledge and their macro of how to use the baron effectively and for my final example it's going to be from the exact same game except this time it's nrg the na team where here they take baron and they all base it relatively the same time now nrg's understanding of baron is a lot better than mad lions that we just saw however they are still lacking the ability to problem solve we're here they all base same time except the one for the ones they don't need to and they are playing two lanes so so far so good they have kaisa mid they have silas bot and the other three are forming a kill squad in the bot jungle they're getting vision they're poking over walks in they are playing it beautifully so far however their problem lies in their ability to critically think and problem solve what's happening on the screen where you might be thinking this looks very similar to what JDG did where they brute force bot. What's the difference? Why is it bad this time just because an NA team is doing it? And the reason it's bad this time is because Mad Lions is showing five bottom. They are just group forced as five trying to death ball, trying to get a 5v5 team fight. Where when you see this happening, you need to be playing two lanes. Because the time JDG did it, they actually saw somebody show on the other side of the map and they punished. They saw, okay, someone is not here. So we can look to die 5v3 or 5v4, depending on how many people there are. We can brute force this tower. But here in this example, you cannot brute force 5v5 under their tower. Most of the time, it's not really going to happen. Where here, Silas should be going mid, pushing the wave, pulling someone to mid. And now when there's someone showing mid, even if there's four bot, it's a lot easier to brute force the tower 5v4 with somebody running between the lanes and looking to set up a dive potentially. Or at the very least, there's two ways being sieged by Baron super creeps. So it's going to be doing a lot more than what they're doing now. Where here, they should be problem solving. They should realize, okay, we can't really break this tower down. We don't have a long range AD. We should send Silas mid, the safest person, to go mid and pressure there. But they're just not. They're not problem solving. I think it's a back it's a back of the mind feeling. You probably feel it in Solo Q2, where if you leave your team might get engaged on a die if you're not there. And I feel it here. I feel that Silas wants to go mid. But he's hesitating. He's scared that his team will get engaged on. And here they just take basically a pure 5v5 team fight where they're not using their Baron at all. Where NRG used it beautifully up until this point where they took over side of the jungle. They're pressuring two lanes, but they just lack the ability to problem solve. Which is what sets the Asian teams and JDG in particular so far apart. Is they're not just set in stone about how to follow the macro, the, the script. They know exactly what's happening on the screen and they play accordingly to the best of their abilities. All right, everyone, I'm going to call it there. And a big thing you guys can take away from this video to add to your own gameplay, and that is to base as soon as possible after taking Baron. It's not going to be worth it to greed for that Gromp or that side wave, even if you get a Sterax, because most of the time, it's going to be more important to be onto the map as fast as you can, pressuring with your team, so that you don't cost your team in the long run. If you're down in tempo, your team might get caught or you might get caught. But if you're the one basing and telling your team to base, it's going to give you a lot of success in the long run. So I hope that helps you in your games. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time.